Mr. Speaker, thank you. Thank you to my great colleague from Wisconsin, Gwen Moore, for yielding and for organizing this session tonight. And uh, happy to be with all my colleagues that are that are here tonight also. So uh, I, I'm, I am very, very proud to be a Congresswoman in one of the most diverse Congresses ever in our history. It is the most diverse. Oh, we now have 94 Democratic women. And we even have quite a few Republican women, that, which is great. And listen, I'm here as a mother and a grandmother as we celebrate Women's History Month. It's a time to reflect on the historic gains women have made and reclaim our efforts as we march uh, to equity. And this is a time when we pay tribute, sister. I'll call you sister. Yes. I feel, you feel like you're my sister. Uh, to the strong, fearless, and selfless women who paved the way for us all. You know, when I think about it, just about every one of us here was first at something. But we know we're not going to be last. We're first, but not last. And uh, in that regard, I'm going to do I'm going to do a couple of shout outs. I want to shout out to our Vice President Kamala Harris, the first Vice President of the United States, who of course graced our Senate. And I want to shout out uh, to the first woman of color ever elected to this Congress, Patsy Mink, uh, who uh, was all, the first Asian American and also the author of Title IX, which has meant so much for women uh, to advance in education. And I'm going to also do a shout out to someone who was one of my very good friends, who I, who I miss already. Uh, as she retired last year, and that's Lucille Roybal Allard, a very proud California a member, first Mexican-American woman to be in Congress. But, you know, it's not really their ethnic identity that, that I think about. Uh, for I just remember, because I got to serve with Lucille, uh, Lucille Roybal Allard, her grit, her determination, the first woman what we call cardinal, uh, in, in charge of a woman of color, in charge of, a, of appropriations committee, We're, and a lot of battles as as chair of the Homeland Security Subcommittee. Uh, and I know she's. I just want to tell you what she left with. She left a quote. One thing I hope is that the people that I have represented over the years know that I've worked hard as I possibly could on their behalf and that I served them honorably and that hopefully I made a positive difference in their life. And I will tell you this, Lucille Robo Allen, if you're listening to this, you made a positive difference in many, many people's life. Uh, and now, Madam Chair, today, tonight, or Mr. Speaker, if I can, let me talk about someone who's a personal hero of mine. I should say heroine. Bella Abzug, and what a trailblazer. Uh, we know her for her hats. She always wore a hat. And she is a giant of the women's rights movement whose shoulders we all stand on today. Battling Bella, as she was effectively known, she was on the front line of every issue of her time. She was born to Russian immigrants in the Bronx, and even as a young girl working in her father's butcher shop, she knew she wanted to be a lawyer. She went to Hunter College, where she was on the student council, and then set her sights on, uh, on Harvard. But the school had other thoughts. They ultimately rejected her because of her gender. Mm -hmm. Ah, but Columbia University was much more astute, and she earned her law degree there became a lawyer at a time when very, very few women were practicing law. She defended black clients in the South. She dedicated her time to fighting labor rights, tenants' rights, and civil liberties. She worked with the ACLU and the Civil Rights of Congress. She marched for equal rights, for feminism, environmentalism, and the LGBTQ plus community. She organ boy, I could go. She organized the women's strike for peace in the 1960s. She brought together tens of thousands of women across America to protest nuclear testing and the Vietnam War. And in 1970, 
Uh, decades into her career, she was elected to the Congress, where she served until 1976. And in these halls, she introduced bills to remove troops from Vietnam. She fought for the Equal Rights Amendment, access to abortion care, funding for child care and gay rights. And she led the charge to make it illegal for credit companies to discriminate against applicants uh, based on the, on the basis of sex, race, religion, and marital sta status or age. Believe it or not, sister, there was a time that women couldn't even get credit in their own name. And then outside of Congress, uh, Bella founded the National Women's Political Caucus with other feminist icons, Betty Friedan, Shirley Chisholm, and Gloria Steinem. Bella Abzig was a true force to be reckoned with, a passionate and compassionate leader who wore many hats, literally and figuratively, and fiercely stood up, stood up for her values regardless of political consequences. She once said of herself, sister, I, and you know, I think her description probably describes a lot of the women in this room tonight. She said, I've been described as a tough and noisy woman, a prize fighter, a man hater, you name it. They call me battling Bella, mother, mother of courage. There are those who say I'm impatient, impetuous, uppity, rude, profane, brash, and overbearing. Oh, whether I'm any of these things or, or of them, you can decide for yourself. But whatever I am, and this be, must be made very clear at the outset, at the outset, I am a very serious woman. And she was a woman to be taken seriously, and she did not back down from the biggest fights of her generation, as she did not give up creating a better world for her children, her children's children. And as, wi as women, members of Congress, looking back at her legacy, we take courage from her actions, and we will continue to fight to build the equitable world that she dreamed of. Bella never backed down, and neither, we wi neither will we. And sister, I yell back.